Hello, I'm Nigel Griffiths, I work in Power Systems ATS Europe. In this movie we'll be looking at active memory deduplication. It's also called for short AMD, which of course clashes with a well-known chip manufacturer, or dedupe, but you have to be careful with that one too, because the disk manufacturers are using dedupe to dedupe disk blocks. Here we're deduplicating memory. This is actually built on top of AMS, active memory sharing, that we've had for uh, three or four years now in our power systems. This session is a theory session rather than a hands-on session. I'll explain why in a minute. We have a red book on memory deduplication, highly recommended and easy to read. But don't forget we're basing this on active memory sharing and we have the older red book on that. Again, that's good reading and perhaps you should read that one first if you haven't already. Let's have a look at the prerequisites quickly. First of all, it has to be a Power 7 machine. Power 6 is not going to work. We also have to have PowerVM Enterprise Edition. You can quickly check that on our HMC, click on the server and look at the capabilities. We also need to have the firmware 740 or above. Currently this is only available in the Power 7 machines which IBM has called the C models because the C is the last character of the model name. These appeared in October 2011 onwards. They also come with the Gen 2 PCIe adapters, updated system planers and with this firmware. To match that firmware you need your HMC at 774. These are the versions of the operating systems you need to run for deduplication. For AIX it's the technology levels that came out at the end of 2011. The VAO server we need at least this release 21110 also known as Fixback 21. To check the version you're on, run the iOS level command. Now the VIO server is not actually heavily used, the function actually isn't in there, it's in the hypervisor, and so it's not highly dependent on the version of the VIO server. I do suggest though that as we have a much later version of the VIO server, you should be upgrading to that in preference, at least 2.2, as that will provide other functions as well. As we've already mentioned, we're only going to deduplicate memory pages which are in the active memory sharing pool. So the virtual machines have to be using that shared memory. Just as a small reminder, if you want to use the AMS, then those LPARs have to be using a shared CPU, shared I.O., no dedicated adapters, and not using those 16 megabyte pages. This is a simplified marketing chart, but it points out a few important things. On the left hand side we have some LPARs using dedicated CPUs, they can't be active with AMS so we have no AMD. LPAR1 there is using shared CPUs but it's having the regular dedicated memory and the others then are using the shared memory from the pool. Now some of the memory pages in that pool it's identifying as duplicated so two of those can be given back to the free memory in the pool and all the reference to them will be set to one set of those memory pages. On the right hand side we have the VO server. We're using that for paging out of the pool but of course it can't be an AMS user itself. We're not going to talk about AMS any further. It's been out for quite a long time. You may have had hands-on experience with it. If not, go and read the Red Book or watch the AMS movie. With AMS, all the memory pages of our logical partitions are mapped into the memory pages of the shared memory pool. Now we could look through that pool and decide that there are lots of duplication, but there's nothing we can actually do with it. With deduplication available, we can change the references all to point to one block in the memory pool, and then we can free up that memory for better uses. So what is providing this function? Well, it's the hypervisor. It's already involved with the active memory sharing pool, and it's controlling the page tables, which map the virtual memory of the virtual machines into the memory in the pool. The hypervisor has plenty of opportunities to get in and do its work for deduplication. It handles all the interrupts, it gets called when the operating systems want a service, and when the operating system runs out of work, they yield the processor back to the hypervisor. Now, finding these duplicates is not a high priority task. The hypervisor then is using otherwise idle CPU cycles in the VIO server. This means we get the optimization of deduplication practically for free. And if our machine gets very busy, of course, then it can step back and get on with the real work of the real applications. There are two algorithms involved. The first one then is the deduplication. 
The hypervisor then examines the memory pages in the pool and uses this lightweight fingerprint. Now, we don't know how they're actually doing this, but if I was doing it, I'd take some bytes at the start and the middle and the end of the page, do an exclusive or, and then I've got a fingerprint that's um, accurate to one in a billion or so. It then compares that fingerprint with its list in a table of fingerprints. If there's no match, then it'll just put this into the table later on, I'm hoping you can find a match with this page later on. If it does find a match, then we've come across this fingerprint before. It does a full page check to make sure the bytes are all exactly the same. If there's a duplicate, then it changes the virtual memory mapping, so both page table entries refer to a single master page. Then the other page is put on the free list, and suddenly we have, apparently, more memory in the machine. Now, of course, the opposite is true. We might have deduplicated a page, but then one of the program attempts to write to the page, and it's a master page, so it can't do it. So these master pages are set as read-only, and the write generates a memory exception. If it's a real read-only memory page, then we crash the process via a signal, as that's really not allowed. If it really should be a read-write page, then the hypervisor will find a free page, make a copy of that master page, change the page table so it now refers to that new copy, and mark it read-write, and then we exit the interrupt, and the process in the virtual machine then try, retries that write, and this time it will work. Now you may be well thinking, how many duplicates do we have on these big systems? Well, there are some very good targets which are... For example, the zero-field memory. Whenever a program asks for a block of memory to use to hold some data, the operating system has to zero-fill it to make sure it's not passing on any information from the previous program. And there's lots of pages like that, so they're perfectly good for deduplicating. We also have partly used pages. Your database may use a block size of, say, 64K, but if it only puts a name and address at one end of that block, then the other 60K will be full of zeros. Again, good deduplication targets. If we have perhaps 40 or 50 virtual machines running, all the common programs will be uh, read-only, and that might be some of the programs that the operating systems run, the, the corn shell and VI or whatever, and the actual applications. Again, we'll have 40 or 50 copies of a DB2 9.7. All those pages can be deduplicated. And of course, by reputation, Java programmers use a lot of memory or allocate it, but don't actually use 100% of it. So again, that would be good deduplication targets. Now there are some bad memory pages, we're just trying to think of a few of them here. If every virtual machine is running completely different applications, then there may not be such high deduplication possible. High performance guys, if everyone is using different data models, one is modeling a car crash and the other one's modeling the weather, well again there'll be very little in common. Also things like um, Movies and uh, images that we're editing, they'll be completely different, or perhaps we're farming those out with an Apache web server. Encrypted data is another example where every memory page will be very different. Now let's have a look at deduplication in practice. Now I've taken this in theory, I'm still waiting for my Model C machine to arrive, so I've taken examples from the Red Books. Well, the first thing we have to do is to create an active memory sharing pool, and then we can switch on the new deduplication flag. I've got a couple of slides on that we'll show you in a minute. We then have to switch our virtual machines to start using the pool. You have to change the configuration of the profile and then do a cold restart to get it active. That's business as normal for AMS. We can alter the deduplication memory table size, not normally needed, so I won't go into great details there. It's a HMC command line only. We've got no control of the CPU use of deduplication. Remember, it's only using idle time, so there's very little point in saying only use half of that amount of idle time or a bit more of the idle time. It is best to just let it get on with it. We can also do some monitoring to see how much deduplication we're actually doing. When we're creating the shared memory pool, we get a series of panels to decide how big it is and some of the other settings, how far we can grow it. And there's now this extra tick box in here for enable active memory deduplication. So we just tick that box and create the shared memory pool. If you've already got a pool, then we can just go and edit it and change it. We can adjust the size of the table that deduplication will use. By default, it's one in a thousand. So for every gigabyte of memory you have out of the pool, it's going to use 
one megabyte of memory for this table, a very small fraction. So a ratio, and don't forget that it's backwards, so if the number of the ratio is higher, we're actually using less memory. If the table's too big, then we're going to waste perhaps a few megabytes of memory, no big deal. If it's too small, we'll miss some of those opportunities for uh, duplicates. Either way, it's not particularly a large problem, and as the Red Book recommends, leave it as the defaults, don't change it. Now, I'm not going to go through this in detail. I will actually put these commands up on the wiki website for the AIX movies. The one in the middle, this change hardware resource minus our memory pool, is how we change the ratio, but I'd recommend that you don't do that. Now let's turn to monitoring. Although AMD is largely set and forget, it would be nice to monitor now and again to see how well we're doing. There's information available at the LPAR level or at the whole machine, actually the whole pool level. To do the machine level, we need to switch on the performance information collection as normal on the HMC. This also gives you the CPU pool stats, so it's useful anyway. To get the data from the HMC, we select the machine and click the button. So we go to Operations Utilization Data. We can change the sampling rate in here. Then we go to the View. Then we're going to select the snapshots and um, whether they're hourly, daily or monthly and the time period then we're going to select the actual one then we show the details and we get this little panel here and we go to view and we're going to select the shared memory pool and finally we get to the AMS pool statistics at the top here we have the size of the pool a useful reminder and the overcommit down here we see the amount of memory that has been deduplicated across the pool and then we see how much logical memory that saves so on average this was duplicated 13 times now you wouldn't want to spend hours getting this data and looking at it again and again if you want to draw some graphs of this data then you can collect the data from the HMC if we're using AX and we can use the LPARSTAT minus MPW command to have a look at what's going on we have a column here which is the physical memory actually inside the logical partition at the moment. Over here we have this page coalition numbers in here. So the first one, nearly 400, is the number of megabytes being coalesced in the logical partition. And the one with an M on the front, MPG col, is the whole machine. So we've taken out 400 megabytes in our logical partition and out of the whole machine it's coalesced 517. We're doing pretty well. There's no equivalent for IBM I at the moment, and the Linux, we would have to use the AMS stat command. This is a graph taken from the Red Book, uh, one of their benchmark runs. Here we can see that they switched on active memory deduplication, and roughly speaking, it gave up 10% of the memory that it was using. So it um, managed to actually give memory back to the pool for other logical partitions to use. We can see here there's the 400 uh, megabytes that it's deduplicated, so roughly 300 megabytes of that was reused by the logical partition itself for better purposes, and then 100 megabytes, roughly speaking, was given back to the pool for the other logical partitions to use. Well, that's all we really need to know to get AMD working, but some thoughts about using AMS and AMD. Now, AMS is used to effectively page the memory between logical partitions on demand. Whoever needs the memory can actually get more memory. We do this by overcommitting the memory, so all the virtual machines perhaps add up to 60 gigabytes, but we only have 48 gigabytes in the pool, and they fight it out healthy competition for resources. This is good at finding unused memory and moving it to logical partitions that really need it at the time. But we don't have to run in this overcommit mode. We could let every LPAR get their allowed memory. So if they all add up to 48 gigabytes and the pool is 48 gigabytes, they all get the memory that they want. You might call this sort of passive mode AMS. Maybe this is a good starting point for AMD. It means that we're not going to get into heavy AMS paging, but we will be able to deduplicate and free up memory that the LPARs can actually use. It's like going from 48 gigabytes to 50 gigabytes to 55 to 60 gigabytes available to this collection of logical partitions. 
in the benchmarks that the developers have performed with uh, AMD, they do actually get up to quite some high numbers of deduplication. If all the LPARs are doing so roughly the same sort of thing, they're getting numbers into the 40, 50 and maybe higher percentage of memory being deduplicated. Really impressive. So there we have it, active memory deduplication. The largest prerequisite is then having to use those C models to get the right firmware that supports it. We have a very good uh, red book, welcome to go and read that. Very simple to implement once we have AMS already up and running. Very low CPU, in fact, in fact, probably none at all, uh, but high gains. We get a lot of memory back by switching this on, and it's largely set and forget. Don't forget, if you want the better quality of these movies or some of those extra details and the commands, I'll put them at this website.